Hello there, I'm here and I'm back with some more computercraft. Today I'm actually going to start a new series about game making with computercraft, which is why I'm actually using another program called Computercraft Emulator. It is used to uh, emulate computers for computercraft. It works pretty well and it's significantly faster than Minecraft. This is why I'm actually using this rather than, well, rather than Minecraft. I'm also going to start another series about game making with a program called Game Maker. I'll give more details when I'm actually starting the series. But let's get focused, well, let's stay focused on compute craft for now. I do not know what the game is going to be, so this is why I'm actually going to make the core of the program, the main skeleton, the main structure, because I do not know what the game is going to be, and if you can, I beg you, please uh, give me any suggestions you have in mind. I was thinking about making a mind sweeper, but if you have any better idea, whatever, let me know in the comment section. I really am interested in knowing believe it or not, and the reason why I'm using a main structure is that most games use the use this main structure and this is why I can actually use it uh, so freely without actually without actually ha um, being afraid that it won't work because I know it will work for most cases. Basically it consists of first of all declaring variables, those variables since I do know what the game is I can't declare variables because they grandly depends on what the game is. Then I declare four main functions. I can create some more uh, depending on what the game is. But there are four main functions which uh, we must imperatively be there. And finally there's the game loop. So you'll see each part in detail starting now. So let's start with functions. First, one, first function I call it init. And basically it is used to initialize all the variables and data you have. Uh, there's not much more to say about that. It's just um, a function which will be called once at the beginning of the game. Next one is display. I, will, I call it display, but you can call the functions whatever you want. It's uh, just as long as you use them correctly, it's okay. I call it display anyway. And basically, it is used to display whatever you want on the screen, to render, to draw, whatever you want, and. Uh, Supposing you're using a Minesweeper, what it will do is it will it will basically draw the minefield, the mines, the numbers, or depending on the situation. So that's why you have to code each function correctly. Next function, I call it update. You can call it whatever you want, like I said before. And basically, this is the only function which uses events, well, which is which has arguments because it, it actually takes into account some variables which will be defined by os.pullEvent, the function os.pullEvent. What update does is it basically it will do all the calculus, all it will manage all the game logic. So it is pretty much the most important function in the game. Yes, it is. And uh, yeah, other than that, well, it's, uh, yes, the last function is, or well, I call it end game. And this is basically the total opposite of init. Basically, it is the function which will be called at the end of the game. It will be called only once, and this is it. It could be used to say, I don't know, like, goodbye, or whatever you want. Usually, I use end game and then display, for example, for Minesweeper, it will uh, end game. I use it to reveal the mines and display one last time so that you can actually see the mines on the minefield where every single one of them was. So there. So those are all four functions. Now then, uh, let's start the actual, actual game loop. First thing we want to do is called init, like that, and declare a new variable. Let's call it cont. I call it cont because, as in continue. This has to be initialized to true. Then you open a loop while cont do da da dum. And basically, while the variable cont is true, the game will go on. If cont equal false, the game will end. So that's that. First thing you want to do in the loop is called display. And so basically, each tick, every time you go through the loop, it will redisplay whatever has to be displayed. And uh, then you want to use os.pullEvent. 
So you have to declare a few variables e, a1, a2, a3, this is how I usually call them, equal os dot pull event. That's that. And let me give you one little detail about update. Basically, update also indicates whether the game has to end or not by returning true or false. If update returns true, it means that the game must end. If it returns false, the game can continue. So if you do if update, it will basically check if the game has to end or not. So if update equal true, that means the game has to end, like I said. So we do cont equal false, and this will allow to exit the loop. And so there. That's the main loop, and of course you have to add end game. And how about display one last time? Of course you can add a whole bunch of other things in the end, like saying goodbye, or in fact what you can do is do another loop, which would have all of this, this whole part, and basically the way you can use it is the first loop yeah, well, is as long as you want to play the game, keep on, and the other one is as long as the game is happening. So at the end it can say, do you want to play again? If you say yes, it will restart the loop. If you say no, it will exit the program. That's one usage you can do. But yeah, I think that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please take a time to like, comment, subscribe. If you have any suggestions, ideas, whatever gets your mind, let me know in the comment section. As I insist, I really am inter interested in your opinion. And since this is the end, I'll be saying goodbye, and see you next time.